Okay, uh, today we have to start chapter 7 and in chapter 7 we will discuss about economic integration. So first question is uh, what do we mean by economic integration? So it's basically refers to the commercial policy of discriminately reducing or eliminating barriers to trade between a selected group of countries. So basically, uh, WTO says we have to reduce barriers uh, to all members of the countries, WTO member countries. But uh, sometimes it is difficult to reduce barrier for all members. So then what happened? Uh, there become some economic integration, some selected group of countries and they come up with some agreement that we will, you know, reduce barriers or eliminate trade barriers uh, among the group of countries. And this is called economic integration and we have different forms of economic integration. So first is the preferential trade agreements. So this is you know, a form of in economic integration which provides lower barriers to trade among participating nations than on trade with non-participating nations. And this is the loosest form of economic integration. What happened in this case of economic integrations? So if you are a member of this preferential uh, trade agreements, uh, you will face lower barriers compared to those who are non-members. Okay, so they will face uh, more tariff or other restriction. And if you are if you are part of this agreement, then you will face a lower barriers. So group of countries can make this type of agreement. And this is the loosest form of economic integration. Then we have free trade areas. So in case of free trade area, if there is a uh, FTA agreement um, between country between two countries or more than two countries, then they will remove uh, all barriers to trade um, between the members countries. And but what happened to other countries? They will you know retains their own barriers on trade with non-members. And this is the case of uh, NAFTA. NAFTA is the example of uh, free trade area. So uh, within the NAFTA countries, there are no barriers. Trade is free. But for non NAFTA members, they keep their barriers. Okay, And each country has its own you know, barrier for non member countries. So this means they will not follow any uni uniform policy for non barriers to other nations. Then we have custom unions. So in case of custom union, uh, they removes all barriers to trade among members countries and harmonizes trade policy towards the rest of the world. Now you can see the difference between free trade area and custom union. So in case of free trade areas, each nation retains its own barriers on trade with non-members. But when it is custom unions, then they harmonize trade policies towards the rest of the world. So they remove barriers to trade among member countries, but they also come up with some agreement that they will follow the same policy of you know, barriers for the rest of the world. This is the difference between free trade area and custom union. Then we have common market. So again, like free trade area, uh, custom unions, they remove all barriers to trade among members. And then this also adopt the policy of custom union, harmonizes trade policies towards the rest of the world, but additionally allows free movement of labor and capital among member nations. So in case of 
free trade areas or custom unions, free movement of labor and capital among member nations are not allowed. But in case of common market, and there will be a free movement of labor and capital among a member of the common market. So European Union is an example of the common market uh, that removes all barriers to trade among the European Union member countries and they also harmonizes trade policies towards the rest of the world and they also allow a free movement of labor and capital among the member nations. There is one country um, that exit from European Union. Do you remember which country? Sir, Britain's. Yes, Britain. Okay, so United Kingdom, they exit from the European Union. So it means once you exit from this union, so you will face barriers. Okay, but from uh, member countries, and also now the movement of labor and capital will not be free from United Kingdom to these European Union countries or from European Union countries to the United Kingdom. Then we have economic uh, union. In case of economic union, this is also a form of economic integration. It removes all barriers to trade among members. Okay. Harmonizes trade policies towards the rest of the world like you know custom unions allows free movement of labor and capital like common market and unifies monetary fiscal and tax policies of members now here there is a difference no, between common market and economic union so in case of common market we don't unify the monetary fiscal and tax policies but in case of economic union, if it is economic union, then they unifies monetary, fiscal, and tax policies of member countries. Then uh, we have duty free zones. Uh, we have areas established to attract foreign investment by allowing uh, raw materials and intermediate products in duty free zones. So in this chapter, we will focus on custom union okay and we will see if there is a formation of custom union then how it will affect the production and consumption and welfare okay now this is partial equilibrium analysis of the custom union you can see here see this is the supply of the commodity and this is the demand for the commodity okay and prior to entering a customs union a country faces the following trade options now you have two options okay this is uh, uh, price uh, japanese price with trade and this is mexican price okay with with tariff okay we are also with tariff so in this country uh, if you import the product from japan and also you have imposed the tariff the price would be this and if you impose the product from mexico uh, with tariff the price would be this okay so now you have two options purchase from mexico at a higher price or from Japan at a lower price. What would be your option? Obviously, Japan. Yes. Okay. Clearly, the preferred choice is to purchase goods from Japan at a lower price. So this country, okay, this is a country you can purchase goods from Mexico or they can purchase goods from Japan but because even after imposition of tariff the price of good from Japan is lower 
compared to the price of wood from Mexico. So the preferred choice is to purchase goods from Japan at a lower price. So this is the case when there is no custom union. Okay. So if there is no custom union, so it means you will keep your barriers for Japan, you will keep your barrier for Mexico. So there is that's why there is a tariff on the goods that are imported from Japan. There is also a tariff on the goods that are imported from Mexico. Now, if the country enters a custom union with Mexico, so then what will happen? If you enter custom union with Mexico, so it means commodities from Mexico no longer pay the tariff. Okay. This is the price with tariff. If you are importing from Mexico. But if you enter into a custom union with Mexico, then you have to remove this tariff. So then we will see uh, what would be the price without tariff. This is the price. Price if you import the good from Mexico without tariff, so because there will be no tariff now. But because uh, there is no custom union with Japan, so you will keep your tariff on the product if you import from Japan. But because now there is custom union with Mexico, so you will remove the tariff from the goods that are imported from Mexico. So this is the price when the good is imported from Mexico. So what happened? This lowers the price of goods from Mexico to potentially below the price of goods from Japan. Now, if if we remove the tariff from ja on Japanese goods also, so you can see that it will be still lower. But because there is no custom union with Japan, that's why the price is here. So now we will see what what are the impact of this custom union. Okay. So. So because by Mexico becoming the preferred provider, trade is created by the custom union. So now there is a trade creation. Okay. So how trade is created? Because you have removed the tariff on the product which are imported from Mexico. So we say uh, trade is created before the custom union you are importing from Japan and this is the size of trade. Uh, this is the demand. This is the domestic supply. Excess demand would be fulfilled. Through imports from Japan. Now if, if you have entered into a custom union with Mexico. You have removed the tariff. So this is the price without tariff and this is the demand at this price. This is the supply and this is the excess demand. So we can see that now imports. Are higher. Compared to this, so after entering into a custom union with Mexico. Now we are importing more because uh, there is a lower price. So because we are importing more, so we are you can say that trade is created by the custom union. So this is called trade creation. So because of custom union, so there is a trade creation. OK, because now we are importing more. So imports were initially a when there was no custom union. OK, and imports were from Japan. After the custom union. Comes into effect. So trade expand to B. So because there is expansion in trade. So we will say there is a trade creation after the formation of custom union with this of this country with Mexico. 
So in this way, a custom union may create international trade. The movement to increase international trade comes at the expense of Japan. Because its former export of quantity A falls to zero. So before the formation of uh, custom union of this country with Mexico, the export of Japan were A. But when uh, this, this country form a custom union with Mexico, they will not import from Japan. So the export of Japan falls to zero. So this means uh, the increase international trade is coming at the expense of Japan. Okay. We will also say that uh, there is a trade diversion. Okay. There is a trade creation, but also there is a trade diversion. How? Because the custom union in this case, the custom union is with the higher cost provider. So in this case, we know that if there is no tariff, the lower cost provider is Japan. Higher cost provider is Mexico. Okay, that's why you know here you can see if you see the initial graph, the price of Japan is lower. The price of Mexico is higher with tariffs. So same amount of tariff or was imposed on the product from Japan and the same amount of tariff was imposed on the product from Mexico. Because the Mexico is a higher cost provider. Japan is a lower cost provider. That's why even after same tariff, the Japanese price is lower than Mexican price. So that's why we say that Japan is a lower cost provider and Mexico is higher cost provider. But when there is a formation of custom union with Mexico, the exports of Japan will become zero. And this we can say that now trade is diverted from Japan to Mexico and the custom unions uh, diverted this trade from the lower cost provider of the good, which is Japan, to a higher cost provider, which is Mexico. That happens to be part of custom union. Why we are uh, importing uh, from Mexico, even if the Mexican cost is higher because Mexico with Mexico, this country entered into custom union. OK, now two things are clear. Whenever there is a custom union. There would be a trade creation. This is definite. OK, but trade diversion depends on whether this custom union is with lower cost provider or higher cost provider. If the custom union is with the lower cost provider, then there will not be any trade diversion. But if the custom union is with the higher cost provider, as it is in this case, which where the custom union is with Mexico. So in that case, there will also be trade diversion. So we can have trade creation and also trade diversion whenever there is a custom union. OK, here is written uh, trade creations occur when some domestic production in a member nation is replaced by lower cost import from another member nation. So domestically, the, the cost is high for this product, for this nation. That's why we want to import. Okay. And when there is a custom union, so there will be a trade creation and this trade creation occurs when some domestic production in the member nation is replaced by lower cost import from another member nation. In this case, uh, 
the Mexico has a lower cost compared to this nation, but has a higher cost compared to Japan. So a trade creating custom union therefore raises the welfare of member nation. So whenever there is a trade creation uh, because of the custom union, so prices would be lower. We can see that here prices are lower. There is more imports, okay, and this will increase the welfare. Okay, a trade creating custom union may also raise the welfare of non members because some of the increase in its real income is spills or into increased import from the rest of the world. Now, because Here, there is increase in welfare of this nation. Okay, so then it may affect the other uh, nations that are not member of the custom union because once uh, there is an increase in income because of the trade creation, so it may affect the rest of the world. Okay. Now this is the case of trade creation and uh, trade diversion uh, whenever there is a formation of custom union and this I will discuss in the next class.